And after three months of consistently pushing out content, I got my first lead and uh, client from that. And then ever since then, probably every one to three weeks, yeah, every one to three weeks, I'm getting a new client from something that I've been posting. Nice. And what were you at before then? In terms of clients, I was probably at an eight or nine. And then now I'm at about 14 to 15. That's awesome, dude. Video has taken the world of digital marketing by storm over the last decade. My name is Parker DeCover, owner of Prime Edge Media, a full service video marketing company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And since 2020, it's been my mission to help business owners across the nation harness the sheer power of video marketing. And the Camera Roll Chronicles is my attempt to supplement that with the industry's latest trends, as well as stories and lessons that we've learned from client projects and even special guests from adjacent industries. So without further ado, quiet on set, please. And action. Guess what's going on? Welcome back to the Camera Roll Chronicles. I'm your host and self-proclaimed fearless leader of Video Marketing Secrets. Uh, today, I'm here with David Cutts. How do you how do you describe yourself? I describe myself as a performance coach and a strength and conditioning coach. Gotcha. David has made a hell of a lot of waves lately with his, with his Reels campaigns, and he's actually doing a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. So um, we've been kind of talking back and forth for the last few months here, and I just thought it'd be a really good fit to put him on the podcast today and just kind of bring some some real like hope to the people that really feel like it's just too hard to get started and it's like you know they don't want to be on camera and you know all that good stuff but first i'm gonna let you properly introduce yourself and uh talk about what you do and all that good stuff again my name is david cuts i own a business called cuts performance we train athletes in order to help them get faster i started working with or indirectly with parker i think about six I feel like six months ago. I'm not exactly sure. I, I feel it. I, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, he's been <laughs> teaching me tons of stuff that I've been step by step implementing to my process and program. And it's been working really well. My social media following has uh, grown. My social media engagement has grown been, and have recently been getting a lot of compliments from other business owners talking about like, how are you, how are you doing this? Let's go. <laughs> and, that's awesome. I to his group. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So I guess let's get started with where were you when you first started as far as like followers and clientele and where are you now? Well, specifically for Instagram, I'd say that when I first started working with you, I was at like low 900 Instagram followers. So like maybe 905 to 900, 112. Uh, where I'm at now is about 100 more. So I'm at 1,012. And then on Facebook, my following went from about probably 700 to over... Oh yeah, 700 followers to about 1.1K followers now. Nice. Okay, and how are your views? My views have also gone up a lot. I'd say my biggest Facebook video recently since I started uh, doing some tweaks with you went from probably like 200 views maximum to I think that one video went up to like 37,000 views, <laughs> if wow. I remember correctly. Dude, that's awesome. So let's talk about how you got started. I don't remember totally like what I had told you as far as like getting started and stuff, but how did you kind of ease yourself into it? Because this obviously didn't happen, you know, overnight. I guess, how did you feel when you first started? Initially, I felt really relatively uncomfortable yeah. because I'm an introvert naturally. Mm -hmm. So getting on camera, having to talk to the camera when there's no one to directly talk to and really just expressing my expertise but still doing it on camera made yeah. it really sort of nerve wracking for me. So early on, it was uh, just sort of forcing myself to get lots and lots of reps. And even if one video would take 50 tries, <laughs> that is completely <laughs> fine. Yeah. Just try to like get it and get it in, get it done and get it as smooth as possible. Once you get it as best as you can, post the video and then roll on with the next one. See, I wish more people thought like that. Like I wish, I wish more people could understand just the the power of just doing it, you know, over and over and over and over. Like I I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know, if if you're gonna do it, like just get one, like make one thing better every single time. So did you follow like a similar framework while you were doing it, or were you just trying to get as like as many out as possible? 
initially or the the concept was trying to get as many out as possible but at literally at the start it would take about an hour to record a 30 second video <laughs> 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 I would try to get it straight through, mess up some words, like at the start and middle of the end, and I'll just start all over, try to get it straight through. So I was just practicing. Man, with, uh, that's hard. Yeah. Like I don't do that. Like. <laughs> so, like now you obviously know that you don't need to get it all right the first time. But so what are some pretty like significant changes that you made as far as your content creation went that really kind of helped it take off? First thing I would say is to, I switched to CapCut as my main video editing app. Nice. And then with that and adding uh, captions so that way everyone can, can read even if they are in a situation where they can't hear audibly. Yep. And then the biggest thing that you helped me with a lot was uh, adding a lot of B-roll and camera transitions. So like zooming in, zooming out, that uh, keeps people visually engaged as well as keeping their brain engaged too. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's a huge thing that people don't consider on social is like, you, you know, you're not competing with other performance coaches. You're competing with breaking news and, you know, the latest Kim Kardashian update and Instagram models and all that other shit that people are watching. That's a lot more engaging than David talking about how to get faster, you know? So like that's, that's super important. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't really take the time to do because it does take a while. You know, especially like sitting there, especially like doing it on your phone and stuff, it can get really frustrating. Like that's why I hire people to do it. I don't do it. And I know that that can be tough, but I really like that you've, you know, taken that initiative to do that because, you know, I think that is what makes all the, you know, world of a difference. Now, as far as the type of content, like what are, so what did you start with initially posting and what are you, what have you kind of graduated into now? That's a great question. I don't directly remember, but I can definitely tell you what I'm into now. Mm -hmm. uh, now I, after doing some market research and remembering the, the type of engagement and comments that I get from my posts, I make sort of short series based on whatever the, the crowd wants to see. <laughs> so, and, and how do you figure out like what they want to see? Sometimes I make just a short reel, just asking a direct question, say leave a comment, and then they engage with uh, either A or B, or sometimes um, people just comment and express their concern. Sometimes I get DMs, a little bit of everything. So, and when did that start happening? After, so after you started making your reels and stuff, like was there a gap between when you started really diving into reels and when you started seeing engagement? I mean, because you had a bit of a following, but was there was there a difference there? I would say yes. Okay. I would say probably between two weeks and a month and a half, two and six weeks before people started consistently engaging and liking, sharing, and sending me DMs and stuff. Gotcha. And what got you through that, like mentally? Just knowing that eventually it'll pay off. I don't know. <laughs> well, and I, I, also, I also think it helps that, you know, you're into fitness and stuff too. So you're used to, you know, delaying gratification for, for results and things like that. So I think that's really important too. I guess, what would you say to people that are, you know, in like month two, month three of making reels consistently over and over and over, and they're just not seeing that traction. I guess, what advice would you give to somebody who is in that situation and they just want to give up? Directly speaking, don't. <laughs> okay. Simply because I don't say that it's all a long road, but it's all a, a track. So if you have, or if you make a thousand videos and one person eventually finds a video that wants to see it, they now have 90, 999 other videos to go see, share with their friends, and then they, they become a loving fan, and then they are someone that will engage with you. And then hopefully it doesn't take a thousand videos, but I think just the best way to say is that, or the best way to put it is that it will work eventually. It's just the better content that you put out, the quicker it will work. Yeah, and that's one thing that we try and talk about a lot is like, the hardest part is getting started. You know, and the hardest part is like getting that momentum going. But once it's going, like you're good. You can, you know, not that we encourage it, but you know, you can stop posting for a couple days, you know, and no one, no one forgets that you exist, you know, because they're used to seeing you over and over and over. Um, but that's a really solid point that, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people think about is that the asset is not the content. The asset is the audience. And 
even if you make, you know, a thousand reels and they only get, you know, a couple hundred views to get started, but then a few months down the line, you know, I don't think people realize how much old videos get pushed. You know, and like we've had some for uh, for some of our clients and like even myself where we get nothing to start and then we just leave it be for a couple months or whatever, start posting other content and stuff and people will go back to them. And we had one that I think is at like 40,000 now that was at like 200 views within the first like two weeks. It's insane. So... Let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about the the monetization cycle. When did you really start seeing some like monetary traction? I would say probably about three months in. And after three months of consistently pushing out content, I got my first lead and uh, client from that. And then ever since then, probably every one to three weeks. Yeah, every one to three weeks, I'm getting a new client from something that I've been posting. Nice. And what were you at before then? In terms of clients, I was probably at an eight or nine. And then now I'm at about 14 to 15. That's awesome, dude. So how are these people finding you? Like, is it just through your reels or are you doing any like outreach or anything like that? So a lot of my people are, or a lot of the clients are finding me through social media. And then about half of them are fine, are, are from referrals from current clients just because they're enjoying the training and the results. Yeah. So have you noticed that even like with your referrals and stuff, are your reels helping with that too? Yes, because then they've heard of me before, they've seen me before, and then they sort of connect the dots and they actually reach out. Yeah. Like we, so we have this thing we call the, uh, the celebrity effect where, you know, we, so we put out this, um, this ad campaign for this landscaper. So we had, he had called me up one day after we launched the campaign and I'm like, oh no, something's wrong. And, <laughs> and he calls and he's like, dude, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like, oh no. Okay. What's up? And he's like, so I just went to this house and they said, they were like, oh my God, it's the guy from Facebook. And he's like, I didn't even know what the hell they were talking about. They invited me into their house and we like did an estimate at their dining room table. And they, and they just said like, they felt like they knew who I was, even though we've never met before because they've seen me before, exactly. you know? And I think that's really cool. And you know, like I get that a lot. And that's why like, you know, we always try and tell people like kind of wear the same stuff too. You know, like I'm always in some sort of prime edge swag because when I go out to networking events and stuff, people recognize me that way. You know, and I, I think it's these, just these little nuanced things that people don't consider and they just kind of give up on because they're like, oh, well, I, I can't see how this one reel made me this amount of dollars, you know, because it didn't, it was, you know, it, it was compounded over like 15 of those plus, you know, a friend of a friend saying that they knew who you were and all that type of stuff. Take me through like the, the shifts that you had to go through in like daily operations. You know, like how much time are you actually spending on filming and editing and, you know, planning out ideas and all that stuff. Okay. So when I first started, it used to take a little bit longer because of just lack of, or lack of efficiency. Mm -hmm. I would train in the morning, probably from 6 a.m. until about noon. And then after that, I would stay, just stay, get a drink of water and then probably record from probably 12.30 until really when I was done. But generally it would be uh, 12.30 until three-ish. And I'll try to get like as many quantity of videos ready to be edited later. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it was inefficient. I was recording, I was taking 20 tries to get one 30 second video. <laughs> so <laughs> could really only end up like with five videos there. And then after that, I would train in the I trained throughout the evening and then Monday night and throughout the week I would edit pretty much the or edit a video for the day and then post it on the day. Then nowadays I still do about the same system except it just goes a little bit faster. So I know that I don't have to try to get it straight through perfect. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I take a, maybe a three to five minute video of me talking about one long topic and then I chop it up or chop that one five minute video up until like four to six, 30 second, 15 to 30 second video. That's a really solid way to do it. Yeah, yeah, a lot smarter. <laughs> <laughs> 
did you have to like buy any equipment? Like, are you just doing everything on your phone? Primarily, uh, I, I've already sort of a, stacked up some equipment before. So I had a tripod already, had a, a secondary work phone that I've been mm -hmm. using. So I just cleared, cleared out any unnecessary apps to make sure that it stays open with a lot of storage. Just started rolling. And I think that's really important because we see a lot of CEOs that will buy a bunch of gear that they don't know anything about. And then they're just like, oh, well, I have all this gear because getting the gear means I'm started, right? And no, it, no, not at all. And it just sits there for months and months and months and they forget that they have it and then they sell it to somebody for dirt cheap and then they do it all over again, you know? So I think it's really important to, to stress here that like you, you don't need all the gear and now I'm a bit of a hypocrite. We, we have a lot of gear around here, but, <laughs> but that's not how we started. I think the more important part that, that people kind of look over is that imperfect action is so much better than perfect inaction. So putting out six eh, videos, you know, they're just like, like, they're all right. They're not great, but you got them out as opposed to one video that took you the time that it would take to make six. What people don't understand either is that your market decides what, like what's good. They don't like your first like three seconds of your video, they're not watching. So it doesn't matter how long you spend on it, like it needs to convert. And I think that people put so much time and effort into trying to make things convert rather than just putting out a bunch of different content, seeing what the audience likes, and then just making more of that, yeah. you know? Um, now, as far as like being comfortable on camera, so, cause you said you were pretty like uncomfortable to get started. Um, so we have a lot of people in the group that are just like deathly terrified of the camera, you know? And w was that you or were you just kind of weird about like putting yourself out there? A uh, little bit of both, for sure. Initially, honestly speaking, when I would stand in front of the camera and like think about the, the script that I have mm -hmm. in my head, I would like start getting hot, start sweating a little bit. Yeah. I was, I was afraid of the camera. <laughs> but uh, it definitely got better over time, especially with the reps and especially with uh, more or seeing the engagement that was coming from the videos, even if the videos were poorly edited or whatever it was when I first started. Gotcha. So was there anything else that kind of got you over that in the beginning? Like outside of just seeing the results and just doing it over and over? Like are there any tips you would give someone who is just deathly afraid of being on camera? I would say to try out different angles. You don't have to stare directly at the camera. If there's someone that you can have in the room with you that makes you feel more comfortable, then you can actually talk to them, have a conversation. They can answer questions that could be... But That's a solid idea. Yeah. The 90% of it, I think, for me was just getting, really getting the reps in. So with you starting to see results with getting leads and stuff, how, so how do the videos that you're posting directly relate to that? Because like for me, like our, you know, I get a bunch of referrals in different like Facebook groups and stuff because people know that I know what I'm doing even though they're not hiring me and we've never worked together, you know, they're still referring me because they see my content. So do you get stuff like that? Just what are the, the kind of weird ways that you have seen, you know, video make you money indirectly? The parents and other family relatives of some of my clients see me post videos of the person that they know, that they share it, and then some tertiary party will come to me. What would you say to, to someone who is just looking for leads tomorrow, you know, and, and they're like, you know, I know I need to get started with video, but I just don't have the time and I, I just want results right now. And just kind of how money is actually made with video and what you can kind of expect. A linear and then exponential growth with the, the viewership of your reels. The duration of the linear aspect of like the steady slow growth will just depend on the quality that you're presenting and which, how, how reactive your market is. And then once it explodes, it's gonna hopefully continue on a fast upper trend. Um, in terms of answering, or as a direct answer to the question of uh, someone who's looking, or someone who would be looking to explode immediately, I would say get a big budget, 
Go work, go work with Parker. Lots <laughs> <laughs> of paid ads. <laughs> yeah. Yup. For real. Yeah, because we get a lot of people like that. They're just like, ah, oh, well, I just want leads. And I'm like, okay, well, if you want some sort of like conversion campaign, we can do that, I guess. But it's not that. That's not a way to build a brand. You know, we're instead of doing direct response marketing, where we're just you post an ad, they click on it, they book a call. Mm-hmm. You know, th- one that's really expensive. But two, like, there's no brand built behind that. You know, people trust brands. People don't trust random ads they see in their newsfeed. You know, that's right in the middle of cat videos and, you know, breaking news and all the other shit. So this is a question we get a lot in the group about, like, how to never, like, run out of ideas. So how do you come up with your ideas? Some of it is, like I mentioned before, just putting out some random questions in terms of, um, subjects in my profession mm-hmm. and then let the, the audience respond back with their engagement and choose from the options that they give me. Um, another option is using the framework that you gave me, uh, which was searching on ChatGPT, searching on, I can't remember what website, but there was like two or three websites that you... Answer the public? Yes. That's one. And then I'll just search like, for me it's sprinting, speed training, and then all the adjacent words that people sort of pair with them. Mm -hmm. And I started diving down those rabbit holes and I try to create scenarios in my head that, like, okay, if I was in high school still and I wanted soccer and speed training, if I was a soccer player and wanted to get faster, what type of problems would I have? And then I started just, you know, one of those Mondays record for a couple hours just answering different questions as thoroughly as possible and then chop it up post it throughout the weeks nice i like it so what are some of your like favorite things that you've learned in the group that have been like most helpful for you i think some of the favorite things that i've learned that have really impacted my video marketing is the transition zooming in and out uh because a lot of times since i'm still developing as a speaker just and uh, getting more and more comfortable with the camera, if I'm just standing there, it's not very engaging. But like yeah. you said, you can either walk around, uh, get different angles of yourself still standing there speaking. Or for me, I shoot the full video standing there and then I zoom in and out and that keeps it visually engaging, which I've seen, like with the, the Instagram, TikTok metrics, I've seen longer engagement time. So uh, a few months ago that you mentioned that Like there's no maximum limit of B-roll and just add as much as possible to keep it visually engaging. So I think both the combination of those is works well. Awesome. If someone's kind of on the fence, like maybe they just joined the group, you know, and they like, they know they need to get into video marketing, but they're stuck in ops and you know, they're stuck in delivery and they're just like, I'm not comfortable being on camera anyway. What would you have to say to someone like that? As far as like, they're, they're just either they feel too busy or they just like don't want to do it, but they know they need to. I would say if you're a business owner or someone, say upper level management, always remember that you can't develop your business if you don't work on your business. Just consider this part of working on your business because it's gonna have a a payoff later down the road and increase revenue accordingly. Awesome. Well, this has been fantastic, dude. I'm so glad we could finally get you like in person here. It's been really, really cool watching you grow. You are one of the few people in the group that have really taken the initiative to, you know, take all of our trainings and do it yourself. And hopefully within the next couple of years, you'll, you know, you'll be on our roster and we can, you know, take over all your content for you. We don't, you know, you don't have to mess around with cat cut and shit anymore. (laughs) All right, guys, so this has been uh, another episode of the Camera Roll Chronicles. Uh, If you guys enjoyed, please check out uh, the Facebook group, Video Marketing Secrets for Local Businesses. That's where we give away all of our secrets that we've learned building our video marketing agency over the last few years using our own strategies. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next time.